Hello everyone, my name is Keely. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome to my first Realmathon vlog. I am so, so excited to be participating in this readathon. I am in the realm of blood. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will leave Cassidy's channel down below. She's Covers with Cassidy. She is the creator and the mastermind behind this amazing readathon. There are four different realms, and we are all trying to battle and be the best realm of all. And of course, I had to choose the realm of blood because vampires obviously and this readathon is really cool because there are attack points but there are also points that you can get for your own team as well and there are extra bonus points now one of the prompts for like the extra bonus points is to read books that have the color of your realm on the cover and of course for blood we have the color red. Now, major fumble on my part because I'm not wearing a red shirt, but I'm about to leave the house. But I wanted to start this vlog and I'm actually starting it in a kind of different location on my bookshelves because the sun is literally right where I usually film and I need to film this so I can leave. But I wanted to start this because I want to show you all the books that I'm planning on reading this week because I am planning on reading solely red books. So there are four books I'm hoping to get through this week um, and then I'm actually hoping to do a lot of fun like themed reading vlogs throughout this month as well and try to get the most points as possible. So moving into the books, the first red book I want to read is Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I actually have an arc of this book and it comes out in a few days. I believe it comes out on the 5th and the reason why I want to read this one first is because it's an arc and I want to try to read it before it comes out so I can get my review out. This is actually an adult thriller. I have read from Amy Tintera before but it was like young adult dystopian and I loved it. So this one I'm really really looking forward to and of course as I get further into the book I will tell you what all of these are about. The second book I have is Insignia by S.J. Kincaid and this one I have owned for so 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 long. I believe this one is sci-fi and obviously a beautiful red cover. And I'm really excited that this readathon is making me pick it up because like I said, I've owned it for a very long time. And I know one of the prompts is an author with initials in the title or in the name, obviously. So that might count for that. But as I'm reading the books, I'll kind of figure out what points I'm going to get through them. And I will, of course, let you know. The next book I have is Talon by Julie Kagawa. This is a young adult fantasy and it's about dragons and the cover is so cool because you can see all the dragon scales and it's actually textured and this is another book that I've owned for so so long probably like six seven years and I just have not picked it up and this is the perfect opportunity to do that because not only is it a red cover but it is a dragon book and Cassidy loves dragon books so it feels very fitting. And the last book I have is Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman, Father and Son. I love Neil Schusterman so much. Jared, I haven't read anything from. I don't know if he has any other books out, but I'm looking forward to this one because this is like a standalone post-apocalyptic dystopian, the water has run out situation. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I'm actually really excited about all of these. Um, but like I said, I'm going to start with Listen for the Lie. And right now, I have an exciting unboxing related to this readathon. So Cassidy also made a ton of merch for this readathon. She has bookmarks, sweatshirts, t-shirts, all sorts of things. And so I went and got a sweatshirt um, and she sells it on Bonfire. And so I just got it in the mail. So like perfect timing for this because I literally just checked the mail. So I'm going to open it up. And unfortunately for me, I live in South Texas. So it's around like 90 degrees lately. So I can't really wear a sweatshirt. But... A little cold front came in and this morning it's only like 60 degrees so maybe I could like dabble in it a little bit but here we go oh my gosh this covers be or this color is beautiful oh my gosh okay here we go this is so like soft and cozy I love it so we have the Judicium Academy that's like a part of this um, readathon the back is my favorite part can you see that it's like a castle on top of a book stack that is stunning. I am so excited for this and it looks like it's going to be just like so cozy and oversized and I really really wish it was cold so I could just like cuddle up in this but Texas girl problems let me tell you. But I'm so excited. Um, as for this weekend I usually get most of my reading done over the weekend but I probably won't get a lot done this weekend because our boys basketball team is playing in the finals for the regional tournament at 12 p.m. today so that's why I'm about to leave the house that's why I'm not wearing red I'm wearing our school shirt so I'm gonna go watch them and I might take you along do a little b-roll of some b-ball 
oh my gosh why did I say that that's embarrassing um but yeah I'm really excited I really hope we win because then this game determines who goes to state so exciting stuff but let's go get ready to go to basketball and of course I will update you when I get further into listen for listen for the lie I think that's what it's called <laughs> I just got back home. Unfortunately, we lost by three points, which is tragic. I feel so sad for our boys, but they had a fantastic season. Also, the school we played, I don't think I said this, is actually Shaq's high school, um, and his coach was there and everything, and my dad actually knows him, so we got to talk to Shaq's coach, but our boys played really good. But now I'm home, I get to read some more, and I actually do have a reading update for you because I am 25% of the way through Listen for the Lie, and this book is really interesting, and I think I'm really going to end up loving it. I already do, so I think it's going to keep going good. Um, so this book is actually a podcast book, which I did not know, so you do get to see some podcasts throughout this story. So we follow this girl named Lucy, and five years ago, her best friend was murdered, and Lucy is blamed for the murder. She's never arrested because there's not enough evidence. And the thing is, Lucy was with her best friend that night, but she doesn't remember what happened. Like, all that we know is that that night her best friend was murdered, Lucy was found walking down the road, super dazed, had a head injury, and had blood all over. And that's all we know. So now everyone thinks Lucy has murdered her best friend. Five years later, this podcaster is kind of opening up the case, doing a podcast, and trying to find out the truth. So... This story is so interesting. I love the podcast elements because we get to meet a lot of characters that way and podcasts are always just so much fun in books. But Lucy is so interesting because of the trauma she's been through, her brain automatically sees different ways to kill people every time she sees them. Like one time in a grocery store, she saw a woman holding a squash. So she imagined killing her with that squash. So like these scenarios come up over and over again and it almost makes her an unreliable narrator but because you're like is she actually capable of murder did she actually do it or what's going on because she also has no idea if she did it or not um but these kind of like visualizations it's not hallucinations but like the visualizations of murder is really interesting because Lucy is just an interesting character and you know she's having these because of the trauma she's been through and I just cannot wait to find out what happened because honestly team Lucy I like believe in my girl but it's also cool because it's set in a small town in Texas. I live in a very 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 small town in Texas. Um, actually this small town in the book they said like 15,000 people which to me is massive. Um, I live with less than 2,000 people in my town. So 15,000 is a lot, but it's really cool because a lot of the things she's saying about like these Texas people, I'm like, yeah, mm, that's how it is. Uh, but I'm loving it so far. So, so far, so good. 25% uh, of the way through because it is an arc. I don't know what the page number is, but now that I'm home, it's like 2.30. So I'm hoping to read the rest of the day. I don't think there's any sprints on right now. I'm hoping sprints come on later so I can join and get the reading going. Um, but today the world championships for indoor track and field is on and I have been watching that it started yesterday and then today I'm watching some more so I probably will be watching that and reading at the same time but I will update you when I've read it some more in this book. I am 72% of the way through Listen for the Lie and I need to update you before I just blow through it and finish it because I basically read this book in one sitting. I've just been laying on the couch watching the world championships and I have not put my book down. It is so good. It is so addicting. And the chapters are short, so you just, like, keep flying through. Not to mention all the podcasts, like, after almost every chapter. It's just riveting because we are finding out new information pretty much every chapter. And all the characters are also finding out all this new information. And I still have no idea who the murderer could be. Like, I have my suspicions, but it, it just, it could be so many people at this point. If you love small town drama this is it. The tea is piping hot, let me tell you. Everybody is super unlikable, and it's just great. It is so thrilling, it's so much fun to read, so mysterious because I have no idea what's going on, but I'm interested. There is so much drama in this book. Not one person is clean. Like, they're all horrible. They've all done terrible things, and I'm like, is there not a single good person in this town? 
but it's so good. I'm loving it. So I'm going to go sit down, lay back down on the couch. I have like an hour and a half left of the book according to my Kindle. I'm going to blow through it and finish it today. I didn't think I'd finish it today, but I'm, I can't wait. I need to know what happens. Okay, I was going to wait to update you tomorrow, but I can't wait. I just finished Listen for the Lie and oh my goodness. <laughs> That book was so good. I love the reveal. I love the podcast. And it's so interesting because like I said, all the characters are so unlikable and morally gray. And usually I hate that, but I loved it in this. I loved all the small town drama and how much piping hot tea was spilled in this town. It was really, really good. And this was actually Amy Tentera's adult debut. And it was amazing. I cannot wait to see what else she does in the adult genre because this was a fantastic start. I also completely forgot that Amy Tatera is actually from Texas. And so her writing about Texas, like she just gets it. And I forgot I've met her. Like this is one of her YA books that I love and I have signed and I've met her and I just love it. And I just love this book and I'm giving it five stars my first book of the readathon and it's five stars so I need to go through the prompts and see what points I can get and we will go through that together and see if I'm adding points to the realm of blood or if I'm going to attack someone. So as for my points that I'm going to do, I'm going to do increasing which is the positive points for my own realm and I have managed to get four of the prompts. So the biggest one I got was get an A+, which is a five-star read, that's five points, and then set up your schedule, which was a required read, and that's three points, and this was required for me because it was an arc that I need to get read before the release date. Snack time, which was a popcorn read, this was also three points. This was definitely a popcorn read for me because I could not put it down. And then the last one I got was stayed up all night studying, which is read a book in one sitting, and this is one point. And I'm definitely counting this as one sitting because after I got back from the basketball game, I just laid on the couch and completely read it and did not move. <laughs> so that is a total of 12 points, but I also got the cover color for my realm, which of course was red. That's the whole theme of this vlog. So I did get a bonus prompt from that. So I have completely submitted my points for our realm. Go blood team um but yeah i'm so excited first book down and it was amazing so hopefully this is a good start to this readathon good morning it is sunday morning and i realized i never told you what i'm gonna pick up next after i finished listen for the lie last night so i'm gonna pick up dry by neil and jared schusterman i'm already a little bit into this like just a very tiny amount i'm on page 33 and i think i can give you a synopsis of it already so it seems like in this book we are going to follow multiple characters over the course of this event because this is an apocalyptic novel and in this apocalypse the water has run out it is called the tap out there is this major drought and so now there is no more water and it says on here everyone's going to remember where they were when the taps went dry so we are going to follow a bunch of characters who are trying to navigate this world without any water like that just sounds terrifying I am literally thirsty just thinking about this so I'm going to read some more of it today it's a little bit bigger it's like 400 something pages no actually it's literally not it's almost 400 pages so it's not that big it just looks chunkier but I have loved Neil Schusterman in the past I've read several of his books and I just truly love them I haven't read Jared Schusterman so I'm interested to see how they two work together. Um, I'm hoping the characters in this book are likable. Like I said, I think we follow a ton. So I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see what happens. But I'm also a little scared because like, what if this actually happened? I'm so thirsty. I'm gonna go drink some water right now actually. But first, let me tell you, this is the first time I've ever worn this shirt. And I am kind of obsessed with it. I really like it. Um, I just filmed my February wrap up. Um, and I actually had to move the camera into this position because the sun is coming through my blinds and it had like all the lines, you know, when it comes through the blinds. So I had to move it, but I think this is okay. I think the lighting's okay, hopefully when I start editing it. But I am going to church in about an hour, so I'm probably gonna read a little bit before then. I'm taking pictures at church today, so when I come home, I will edit those and I am going to watch World Indoor Championships again. And I'm going to read while I'm doing that, so hopefully I make some good progress. All right, it is now like 
3 15 and i am almost halfway through dry i am on page 170 so almost 50 percent of the way through and i am really really enjoying this book neil schusterman's writing is just so good and his characters are so believable and realistic to me that i just get so sucked into the stories and the crazy thing is about this is i can totally see our world going this way like like i could easily see it in my mind that something like this could happen and it's kind of frightening because things go bad very quickly um we do follow we've seen like at least three different point of views right now and then occasionally we'll get these things called snapshots which is just like a random view from somebody that we might never see again or that we might subtly cross paths with in the future but the main people we follow is this high school girl named Alyssa and then we follow Kelton and then we just got another one Jackie now Alyssa and Kelton are next door neighbors and Kelton's family are actually like survivalist like extremist type of people so they've been preparing for the apocalypse for ever and so he's used to that he's grown up this way so they're like super prepared and Alyssa and her little brother Garrett are living next door and she is awesome I really like her because she's super strong and independent but also like really I don't know likable and um she just like cares for people in general and Jackie don't really love her but I think her character is definitely going to have a purpose within the story um, but yeah, I am really enjoying it so far. I'm kind of like flying through it. I'm not really wanting to put it down at all, which is great. I'm just like reading and reading and reading. So, um, I don't know how far I'll get in today. I probably won't finish it, but I will definitely get further in today because I am not done reading today yet. Like I said, it's only like three something, so I ha still have several hours left of the day. But yeah, I'm so glad I am enjoying this. So far, this readathon has been going really well. It is now Monday. I just got home from work and I have a few reading updates for you. So I am further into dry. I am now on page 270. So I have about 120 pages left and I am still really loving this. I am along for the ride. I just have no idea how this is going to wrap up. Like this feels like the beginning of a dystopian trilogy. I don't know how we're going to finish things in 120 pages or if we actually will finish things up and wrap them up nicely, but we will see. I'm excited to see how that ends. But I also did start another book today. I always like to have a physical book and an ebook going. So I started an ebook today and that is a clown in a cornfield. And obviously this is a red cover and it does count as a Cassidy fave, which I believe is five points for your team, which is always helpful. But from what I know about this one, this is a young adult slasher. So it is a horror. And I believe that it's also like pretty graphic for a young adult. I am already 40% in. So I'm 130 pages into this and we are just now getting to the slashing. In my opinion, it took way too long to get to the slashing and the setup for me was not interesting enough because I hate these teenagers so much. I really hope they get sliced and diced because I hate them so much. Even the main character, Quinn, she moves into this town. So she's the new girl. Um, she's like an athlete. She doesn't get in trouble and immediately she starts hanging out with the troublemakers. And I'm like, Quinn, I thought I liked you here, but you're so dumb. I just don't get it. Um, but yeah, I hate everyone. So the good thing is, usually, if I hate all the characters, then I hate the book. But slashers are the exception because they're most likely going to die, which I enjoy. So we will see how that goes. Right now, I'm just feeling kind of mediocre, a little disappointed by it just because I feel like it took way too long to get to the slashing and the buildup was just annoying in my opinion. But we will see. So those are my updates right now for reading. As far as what I'm doing today, um, I need to edit and upload my video for tomorrow, which is my February wrap up. That doesn't usually take me long. I'm a pretty quick editor so I will be doing that. I know they are having Romathon sprints later at 5 p.m. my time so I might hop on those and maybe I can read more of Dry. It would be a great time to finish this but I doubt I will because usually when I get home from school I just like to watch TV. So there is a possibility I will just be editing and watching Kitchen Nightmares. We will see but I'm making good progress. I did not know that I would read that much of Clown in a Cornfield today and I am getting close to finishing this as well so progress is being made i can't wait to see how dry ends that's what i'm concerned with right now i need to know if they're gonna get water honestly i just need to know that hello it is like 8 40 p.m on tuesday night and you might be wondering keely why are you still awake um because i am on sprint tonight and i'm so excited i'm on keisha's channel with hannah and i just i just love having sprints with these girls because 
they are so wonderful and lovely and I just feel like I can relate to them a lot even if Hannah and I do have different tastes in books but shout out to Keisha and Hannah I'll leave their channels down below but I am working on finishing two books tonight and I just finished one and that was Clown in a Cornfield by I think it's Adam Caesar and this one is labeled as young adult but I don't think it's young adult I've read extreme horror and I don't think this is like extreme horror but it definitely could go that way I think it has young adult characters we follow teenagers but a lot of the killings are like pretty detailed which I like I enjoy but if you don't you might want to be wary going into this um but this was one of those books that like an hour ago I was like I'm pretty sure I hate this but then it ended and I'm like okay I might continue so the main reason I hate this is because of how despicable all of these teenagers are one of the my biggest pet peeves in books is when teenagers party drink are vulgar like all of those things that just was not me as a teenager I understand some teenagers are like that trust me I'm a high school teacher I know but that was not me and I hate reading about it and these characters are so horrible like they're pranksters but it's also like mean pranks and they're just horrible so you're hoping they die and I will say most of them did not all of them I'm obviously not gonna tell you who but I wasn't completely satisfied because I wanted all of them to perish but I will say the ones that made it did have some character development um, and it was enough, I think, to bump it up a star. So I'm giving it three stars. I was going to give it two because I hated everyone so much. And some of the reveals, I was just like, seriously, these characters are so dumb. And the person who was supposed to be like the hero of the book, I still hate. So like, I can't root for you as a hero if I hate you. But I'm giving it three stars because I actually had a great time reading it I flew through it I could not put it down um and it was truly a popcorn read so I'm giving it three stars overall but now I need to figure out all of my points for Rumlathon okay so this book didn't get too many points for me but I am adding points to the realm of blood and I'm gonna get five points for teacher's pet which is a Cassidy fave this is one of Cassidy's favorite books I looked on her goodreads um unfortunately it was not mine but I have realized that we don't have the same taste in books but i still wanted to read it so cassidy fave and then definitely snack time which is a popcorn read so those are the only two normal prompts which is only eight points but i do get the bonus prompt for cover color because obviously red and i am counting this as a school setting it wasn't completely set in a school setting but like the first almost 30 percent they were in school they had in school detention and suspension and all of that stuff so i'm counting that so we are submitting that now more points were added to the blood realm um and i'm excited so my plan for the rest of sprints are to finish dry i have about i think like 88 pages left so depending on how long we much longer we sprint for i might be able to finish this one as well which i'm excited about because i'm enjoying this one more and I still have no idea how it's going to end, even though I'm so close to the ending. But yes, I am going to continue sprinting and hopefully finish dry. If I do finish it tonight, I will update you from this spot again. If I don't, I will see you when I do finish dry. <laughs> it's clearly the next day, but I did finish dry on sprints last night. And I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I actually loved how it wrapped up. I didn't think I would because once again, I didn't know how it was gonna wrap up since it is a standalone, but I really enjoyed how it wrapped up. And a lot of the quotes in here were really beautiful. And I think the message overall about this story was really, really great. And I kind of like teared up a little bit like on the very last line because it was just a great message. So I ended up giving this one five stars. I really did enjoy each of the characters we followed because they all were so different and so unique and they each had their own voice which was really great. The scary thing about this is that I can see it happening and I am currently an injured runner so I'm not drinking as much water as I normally do because I can't run and so I have been like pretty dehydrated lately <laughs> and so reading this added on to my already dehydrated body is just a lot like I was just like I feel like I'm living this life right now but I gave it five stars I really enjoyed it 
and I'm not surprised because I love Neil Schusterman. But the next book I am picking up for this vlog is Insignia by S.J. Kincaid and I have actually met S.J. Kincaid like several years ago so this one is signed but I actually haven't read anything by her and I believe this is a uh, sci-fi book. I'm only like 22 pages in so I'm literally not that far in um, but yes this is a sci-fi and it's pretty chunky. It's like almost 440 no 450 pages which is bigger than I would want <laughs> right now. Um, my like ideal book length is between three and 400 pages so this one is like knocking on 500 but you know it's a floppy paperback and I've had it for so long so I'm excited to get it off my TBR so hopefully I enjoy it because so far this reading has been going really good and I'm pretty much loving most of these red books. Hello, it is now Friday, which is the official start of my spring break, and I am so excited. I am hoping to get so much reading done this week, but I didn't update you at all yesterday because as soon as I got home from work, I went to a track meet and I took pictures there, so I have a few things to catch you up on. First and foremost, the last time we talked, I finished dry, but I forgot to tell you the points that I got for this book. So this was the first book I think that I attacked Another Realm for. So the categories I got were Sabotage a Group Project, which was two or more authors, and that was four points. And then Detention, which is a one word title, and that was three points. Poison a Classmate, which is a book featuring death, which was two points, and Win a Duel, which was more than one POV, and that is one point. And then I obviously got the Realm cover color for this one. So I got some good points for that one. And then I told you I was going to start Insignia. And I did, and then I DNF'd it. I DNF'd it at page 25, so literally so early on, but I just felt like when I started reading this, I could tell it wasn't gonna be for me. The writing just wasn't working for me, um, and I don't know exactly what it was about the writing, it just didn't feel like a story I was getting sucked into, and so I figured I have this book and the second book, and I'm just gonna unhaul them, and that gets some off of my TBR, so unfortunately I DNF'd Insignia, which means I picked up the last book for this vlog, and that is Talon by Julie Kagawa. Now, I am just a little bit into this one, like 34 pages, so I'm not going to give you a complete synopsis yet because I'm going to wait until I'm further into it. But this is a dragon book, and the cover is so, so cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one, and I didn't realize until I started it, this is not like a fantasy other world. This is dragons in our world, which I love urban fantasy. I don't like like fantasy fantasy, I like when things are in our world. So the last thing I have to update you on is very, very exciting. And this is a special edition book haul. Now I'm not going to show off each and every detail of these books because there are five in this series and that would take a lot of this vlog up. And so I'll save that for like a special edition book haul. But I got it yesterday and I didn't do an unboxing because like I said, I didn't record yesterday. I literally just opened it real quick and then left the house. So the editions I got, let me see if I can lift them up for you. These are the Percy Jackson editions from Illumicrate. So let me show you each cover. They're amazing. They're so beautiful. I love them. Of course, my battery died. So now let me show you the book covers. So first, of course, we have The Lightning Thief, and this one is in yellow. And then I just showed you all the edges lined up, make a little scene. And it's just so beautiful. I just love how they're all in different colors, too. And the next one is actually my favorite. The Sea of Monsters. Look at this blue. It is stunning. I love all the foiling on these editions as well. And they do have more to them, but like I said, I'm not going to show you all the details in this vlog because I could probably sit here for a very long time and talk about them. And then the Titan's Curse in a beautiful green color. And then the Battle of the Labyrinth is orange. <laughs> She's stunning. And then of course the last one is The Last Olympian, which is in a red color. Go Blood Realm, am I right? But these are just absolutely stunning and I am so obsessed with all of them. And like the spines and the way they sit on my shelves and the way they look, I love them so much. Percy Jackson is one of my favorite series and I recently reread like all of those books and The Heroes of Olympus last year. And so as soon as Illumicrate announced these, I was like, I need those. And they're just, they're even more beautiful in person. So be on the lookout for a future special edition book haul where I will go into detail with those if you are curious, but I'm so happy with them. So as for today, it is Friday. I don't have plans because I never have plans. So I think somebody is doing Romathon sprints tonight at like 5 p.m. So like in almost an hour. So I might hop on those and maybe read some, but I also might just watch Kitchen Nightmares for the rest of the night. <laughs> Who knows? It's spring break. Let's get wild. 
Good morning. It is now Saturday and we had a little bit of a cold front come in last night. So now it's like 60 degrees. So I can finally wear my Realmathon sweatshirt, my Judicium Academy sweatshirt. And I'm so hyped for it. But because it's Saturday and I'm not doing anything today, I've already done so much reading and it's not even noon. So I'm on page 200 of Talon. First of all, look at this naked hardcover, the foiling on here, and then the end pages in this book are also amazing. So I'm 200 pages in, so let me give you a little synopsis. So this is dual point of view. The first one we follow is Ember. This is really throwing off my white balance. Okay, the first girl we follow is Ember, and she is actually a dragon. So in this book, dragons can shapeshift, so they can also have like a human form as well. And she is a part of this organization called Talon, and they like train hatchlings, and it's like rigorous and very, very strict. And her and her twin brother, Dante, are going to pretend to be humans and try to assimilate into this small beach town community and try to train to become better dragons and also to figure out like where their enemies are. So Ember is assimilating into this human community when she comes across a rogue dragon. Now this is like completely unheard of and she could even get into so much trouble just for talking to this rogue dragon. But as she begins to talk to him, she realizes that Talon has more secrets that they are not telling Ember and this organization might not be as good as she thinks it is. Now, the other point of view we follow is Garrett, and he is part of the Order of St. George, which are dragon hunters and dragon killers. So he is being sent to this same small beach town because word on the street is that there are two sleeper dragons, or at least one sleeper dragon, in this small beach town, and he has to go undercover and try to figure out who they are so he can kill the dragon. And of course, it's Ember. And so we're kind of having like this little Romeo and Juliet moment, but I'm also wondering if we're gonna have like a little love triangle because the rogue dragon we've only seen like twice. We had, haven't really gotten to know him yet, but I'm wondering if there's gonna be like a little bit of a love triangle here. I already know who I want her with if that is the case. Right now, that isn't the case. That's not where things are going. Right now it's like a clear one person is happening but I'm really enjoying it. Um, it reads pretty young, which I love like the old classic young adult books that like we grew up on. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying both characters, especially because Ember is from sh such a strict, rigorous background that she just doesn't understand a lot of the human tendencies, which is fun. But I also like getting the two point of views because they're both highly trained, but for completely different reasons. And so I'm really enjoying it and I'm kind of really blowing through it. This is almost 500 pages, but I've already read like, I don't know, 140 pages this morning. So I'm hoping to make a lot of progress and then hopefully finish it tomorrow. But that is my update for right now. Um, yeah, it's going really well. And I've had this on my TBR for several, several, several years. I'm still undecided if I'm going to complete the series or like continue in the series or not because I think there's like five books in the series but I'll probably decide um, when I finish it if I want to continue or if I'm just satisfied with this one book but yeah I'm gonna sit down and keep reading I'm just loving that it's cloudy outside no sun and it's not 95 degrees we love to see it we really do so I clearly had to change out of my Judicium Academy sweatshirt I am devastated. I got sauce on it during lunch and I usually don't do that. I am not that type of person and so now there's a stain on it and I'm desperately trying to get it out. But good news, I did finish Talon and I really enjoyed this. So about halfway through, we actually started getting a third point of view. So I told you we have Ember, Garrett, and then we started following Riley, who is the rogue dragon. So we get to see more of him and I definitely think this is going to head in the love triangle direction, like I mentioned earlier. I'm pretty confident on that, um, but I still, I still have my guy that I want Ember with. Like from the very beginning, I like knew who I wanted her with, but I'm not gonna say. But the different point of views were really, really interesting, and I love how they all had like different problems in their life. Obviously, Ember is a dragon discovering that her like. Com not company, discovering her organization is bad. And then Garrett is a part of like the enemy organization trying to kill her. And then Riley is rogue trying to run from literally everyone trying to kill him. 
So I am a sucker for like the trope of characters slowly finding out that the thing that they have been a part of their entire lives is actually really bad. And two characters in here had that and I just, I love that. Like when you start realizing I gotta get out of here, but it's so dangerous to leave the situation that they're in and it's all that they've ever known. And like I said, I love the whole kind of love story with on opposite sides, like the Order and the Talon, like they hate each other. And so these two people should not be together. But over the course of this book, they start kind of having conflicting emotions because they're like, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I just love that. And I looked it up. I've had this book for 10 years. 10 years. It came out in 2014 and I bought this book when this was the only book out in the series. So I've had it for 10 years and I fully believe that I enjoyed it just as much at 28 as I would have enjoyed it at 18. So I will tell you, if you do not like 2014 young adult fantasy books, you are probably not going to like this. However, that is pretty much the only kind of fantasy that I enjoy, so I loved it. I ended up giving this one four stars. I'm really, really happy that I enjoyed it after it's been sitting on my shelves for so long. And I'm so glad that Realmathon is helping me get to books that I've had for so long and that I'm actually enjoying them. So yes, that is my final red book for this vlog. And how fancy, I'm actually ending it wearing red. We love to see it. But that is it for this vlog. If you have made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave the blood drop emoji for the realm of blood. And let me know if you're participating in what realm you are a part of. I would love to know. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, all my social media links will be down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.